So today we'll do a review of this Anvil car refrigerator. Uh, they actually sent me this, so I'm supposed to be non-biased here, and I'll be very honest about the Anvil refrigerator. Um, the refrigerator needs that I had were very limited, so when I first got a refrigerator, I got the little Alpacool. Um, I think it's a 16 quart. It's just a little one. I think it was 150 bucks. Um, but when I was shopping this category, I was looking at the more expensive ones originally because the overlanding category just has overinflated prices for everything, including refrigerators like the ARB and a little winding dog. Um, ARB and uh, Dometic make some of the more expensive but more commonly used. And they're really nice high end machines. However, the um, Asian import market for these devices, the compressors, aren't probably going to be at the same standard of quality. But for the use case and the abuse that they get, uh, it's probably cheaper and more economic to get this type of refrigerator because you're probably more likely to break them in these environments. Um, so they probably won't last the 15 years that the compressor will anyway. Um, and I see a lot of uh, people sharing online about their their uh, higher end refrigerators breaking often. So that's what led me to go down the cheaper category. However, this one is a similar footprint to the Alpacool. So dimensionally speaking, it's about the same on the base, but it's just a little bit taller. And in that, it becomes about twice the volume. There's a compartment at the top here, which I'll leave all the dimensions and stuff in the bottom in the description. Um, this here is the always refrigerating compartment. So this doesn't ever freeze. And you can set this compartment here, which is much larger to any temperature. You can actually, I think, do positive temperatures in the like 60s Fahrenheit. Um, but this here is, you can set it to freezer or fridge, so you can choose your preferences on that manner. It's a pretty simple um, four button display here. Um, oop, they're very, very sensitive. So that's something to be very careful of with these types of devices. I was actually just having this conversation about this design should have actually included that this lid completely cover the top and these buttons be recessed inside it. The use case for these types of refrigerators are often in vehicles and that's why they're built on a 12 volt system. Um, so having buttons exposed that you could accidentally bump with like a backpack and have it turn off your refrigerator because you were tossing um, your gear around in your vehicle is actually just a bad design method. Um, there are some things about these types of products that you just have to expect haven't been completely thought out um, in their use cases. So, um, and some of it is just, you know, newer companies. Uh, this, for instance, is not my favorite feature here. Um, the plug for it actually comes out the front of the device. And so I guess it's not terrible. It's just a weird place for it to be. Um, this one, obviously, it gives you a little bit of flat backing on there and then it kind of lets the cord snap into place underneath it. It's just some different designs. I think they should probably have angled this here downwards so it would be a little bit easier to kind of tuck the cord beside it or off, up to the other side of the vehicle. Um, that being said, there are some, some good things and bad things about this. So the instructions obviously translated from Chinese are not that easy. The app, I cannot recommend to get this at all. Um, it is from a website, it's not on the markets, so you have to allow permissions to download what could be a malicious app. Um, I only downloaded it onto my old phone and turned off location and internet after I turned on the app. Uh, the app itself won't let you even connect to the refrigerator without your location being shared to the app. So if you do choose to do this, you can still download the app, use it with location permissions set on, and then just in your preferences, turn off your location data here. So then it won't share it to the device or to the app. Uh, I'm not a fan of that either way, but they should make this available on the app store. It does have some cool features that obviously you can you can set the temperature. You can hear it ping every time I do it, and I'm changing the temperature by the little phone here. It's pretty pretty nice. Um, and then it has the uh, electric shutoff mode and then the energy conservation mode. Um, these are, you know, just different settings of how the compressor will perform, I believe. Um, and then this here is just the shutoff for the battery. These have a battery disconnect. So if you plug this into your car outlet, 
um, that will shut off if the battery in the vehicle gets below a certain voltage or a threshold of voltage so it knows the battery's low based on those parameters. This is the same plug this uses. It is a 12 to 24 volt system, so it is kind of odd that they went with the 24 volt power pack instead of, I mean the 12 volt rather than the 24. So this is the power brick that it uses to invert the uh, AC to DC. Now, yeah, this should have been 24 or at least like a 19 like you would get in a laptop, so it would be closer to this so you wouldn't have as high of amperage. Uh, not that it's a big deal. Then some other things that I've noticed that from just a di design perspective are not my favorite. We're gonna look at, first of all, see this little ridge right there? That's caused by this upper rim, and that's part of the sealing mechanism. And then these at the top have a foam rubber gasket that runs around the lid. The lid's fairly heavy, and it's magnetic at the front, so it sticks. But there is an issue with, you can see it clap shut, the design is not flat on the top, which I really wish that this were designed so that this were a surface that you could use for other things. Um, so if it were flat, it might have multi uses for people who like overland or whatnot and use the space more um, compact. But the issue I have is from a manufacturing standpoint, the chassis is pretty close to, on this side, an exact match to the lid that gap is fairly even. But on this side, the gap is actually a little bit wider in the middle. And because of that, you can see a little air gapping up there. Um, I did a crinkle test earlier, and maybe I just didn't shut the lid hard enough, but we're gonna do that right now and see if that ridge goes all the way down. You see the ridge starts to disappear in the center. Right about here, there isn't much ridge because the shape on this side is a little bit out of spec. Again, I don't think that this will make a big difference over time, but for a refrigerator, I would hope that there'd be a little bit less of a gap on the top. Again, I don't think it's a big deal. It might just be, you know, the way that this panel sets it might still make a good enough seal to keep things cold. And the way thermodynamics work is that the cold air wants to sink. So that's why chest freezers are so popular. It's the most efficient way to store cold is with an opening from the top so it can't escape every time you open it. So not a big deal, um, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty excited about it in total. So th that was the bad, I guess. The app, not my favorite. Don't really like that kind of concept. Um, wish they would cover the buttons or make a way to cover the buttons because you could accidentally shut it off. I think you might have to hold the power button on this one a little bit longer, um, which is good but I don't like being able to bump buttons in the vehicle, but this thing is pretty large. I think it's 36 quarts um, in total space. I can fit like 75 cans inside of it. So it's got some, some really good volume to it. It does have a little bit of noise. But pretty comparable to this refrigerator as well. Um, and again, these little cheap Chinese imported refrigerators are still highly efficient and effective. This has been in the garage for about two years now, running as a refrigerator only for like the last maybe four months or five months. Um, previous to that, it ran as a freezer. And even just today here as the 4th of May, um, it was 92 degrees and the garage is not conditioned at all. And it just sits out here. So it obviously experiences some pretty extreme conditions and it still runs without a tick. I expect this device to probably perform identically in that manner. Um, just some little wishes in the future. It would be easier from a design perspective to flatten this top out and give me some working surface, but it looks really sharp. It has a lot of capacity. Um, it's very portable and I guess I can try and take this little stand out of here. Just to compare the, the footprint of these. Sorry about all that noise, that was fun. Um, but as you can see, you know, that is the size almost identically of my other refrigerator. So when it sits in the back of my vehicle, it won't really take up any more space on the floor surface, it'll actually fit in about the exact same footprint, but I'll get a little bit more volume by just going up. So all in all, I think it's gonna be pretty sweet. Um, I'll do a review of this after a few months of running it. I'll probably start running it out of my Jeep 
on the regular now. I'll just keep it plugged in inside the vehicle and just see how long the torture test of being really, really hot inside of a vehicle goes for it. And then uh, I'll report back. But it's so inexpensive compared to the other ones on the market. I would do this 10 times over before I ever bought something that was more expensive. They're just, in my opinion, not for the type of you know, Jeep camping that I do and for the cost savings and the return on investment in that if it ever breaks, I don't, I can just buy another one. I can't, I can't beat that. But yeah, let me know what you think. If you've used one of these before and had terrible luck or if you've had really good luck, I'd love to know about it.